Welcome back. You're watching HFO TV. I'll just do a quick summary. A lot of stuff's been addressed already. We have seen a tick up in permits. A lot of what we saw in 17 was due to inclusionary housing. So you're going to see permits will be down in 18. So we had a run up. Everybody tried to get their jobs in before the February of 17. So we've seen a run up of permits, a run up in delivery. We've seen increase in vacancies. Our thought that's going to be short term due to kind of what Joe talked about. If we don't build more housing, we still have the immigration. We're going to be back to where we were a couple years ago in terms of demand, outpacing supply. On the investment side, we've seen is, you know, we thought we would see an adjustment in cap rates with interest rates. Uh, we saw a run-up in interest rates when the 10-year was over 3. It's now back down to 2.7. There hasn't been a big adjustment in cap rates. Capital is still looking for a place to invest. If anything, we've kind of seen commercial real estate and apartments specifically are looked at as more of a you know suitable kind of investment, more liquid. So there's a lot of capital looking for investment. As both of them mentioned, Pacific Northwest is pretty you know, kind of one of the shining darlings of the commercial real estate world. So we're still seeing demand coming in this market. Transactions won't be as high as they were in 2016, but and in volume, but a lot of that has to do with the number of institutional transactions that came in 16. That really drives up the dollar volume. And number of transactions were really close to 17. 18 will come really close to that number. So in summary, what we're going to see is that, you know, kind of the unknown out there is the political climate within Portland and Oregon. But it's right now we still have, you know, capital coming in. Interest rates are still good. So it's, you know, we haven't, we're still kind of in the ride where we are for how long. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, Greg, you mentioned rent control. Would you give us a quick update where we're at and where that's going? Well, as you know, there's the exemption still in place. There was uh, some negotiation going on and down on the state level in terms of do they keep the exemption? Do they get rid of it? Do they do something? You know, the last proposal that I saw was a 7% with a kind of a CPI blended cap uh, that you could do in a one-year period, keeping the exemption in place. You know, again, I've heard that also that in Salem, they recognize not having the cities doing their own thing may be a benefit. I will say just, you know, in the last two years and kind of dealing with this, I don't necessarily always believe what I hear from the various lobbyists and all that, you know, I mean, so it's kind of hard to say, but that's kind of the, some of the negotiation going on. There's also uh, no cost notices is the other one. Uh, what well, we see, the interesting thing, the big split has been smaller landlords typically in rural, more rural areas don't believe that rent control will come into their market, so they're more adamant about trying to fight for no cause. And what we're trying to explain is that if rent control comes in the state, no cause is gone. You don't, can't have rent control in the market with a no cause. So that's, that's the issue. And then a lot of other things is people will say, hey, 7% plus a 2% on a CPI is okay. That sounds okay. But, you know, once you kind of open the door, you know, what does that say? And does, do the cities have the ability to say, okay, I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm going to, you know, Chloe's already come out and said, you know, that's unacceptable. PTU came out and said if that goes through the way it's written, they're going to go after Jenny Burdick, Speaker of the House. So Speaker of the Senate. So I, it's, it's in flux right now, and again, we'll kind of continue to update, and I'm sure we're going to ask for help from everybody as well. Help a, a financially, and also help, we need bodies and seats when they, have these, when they have these hearings and things like that in Salem. That makes a huge difference. You know, when we're, when we're in the middle of this, there's the economic battle, and then there's the emotional battle. Typically, the business side use, loses the emotional battle, and we can make sense, but as we've seen with inclusionary zoning, a lot of times they're not listening on the business side. We talked, to, we're blue in the face about the effects of occlusionary zoning was not going to give the desired outcome they want. Now they're kind of saying they understood that, but again, they didn't listen to it. So again, we'll need financial support as well as, you know, physical support, bodies in Salem, bodies in the city. So. Okay, well, I want to say thank you for everybody coming. Uh, we look forward to working together in 2019. And thank you to our speaker. Our entire office specializes in multifamily real estate, making HFO the largest multifamily brokerage in the Pacific Northwest. Your success is our passion. Build your legacy with HFO. Call 503-241-5541 or visit our website at hfore.com for more information.